Well, hello there and welcome to School of the Spirit. So glad to come your way again. And I believe that if you've been following the series so far, that you've been blessed and edified. You know, the Word of God, there is nothing like God's Word. It's the agent for change as far as the believer's work is concerned. Everything that God will do in our lives must go through the protocol of His Word. In Acts chapter 20, verse 32, Paul declared to the Ephesian elders, he said, I commend you to the Word of His grace that is able to build you up and then give you an inheritance amongst the saints. And I believe that day by day, at one episode after the other, God is building us, is recalibrating our mindset, giving us a reorientation in our understanding of his ways from scripture and this is what is making for our transformation day by day from one degree of glory to the other and I believe that this episode is going to be outstanding and um, life transforming as the previous with that being said let's say a short word of prayer and we get right into what God has for us today Father I thank you for my viewers and my listeners right now thank you for this blessed and precious people as we feast on your word in the next few minutes that you will open our understanding that you enlighten our minds and that you will show us your ways that we will grow in our knowledge of you by the help of your spirit in jesus name amen and amen so we've been on the series uh, transformation by prayer and uh, in the last three to four episodes we've been examining the different stages of um, transformation that occurs when we engage the art and the lifestyle of prayer prayer is fundamental and important as far as the believers journey of progress is concerned with God and in the kingdom it's it's a non-negotiable subject we, we we literally cannot do anything with our lives as believers without involving um, the art and the ministry and you would want to call the lifestyle of prayers it's so fundamental to the spiritual health the growth and the vitality of every believer we looked at uh, transformation by prayer from the beginning i told us that transformation is the process uh, of change the process of the change of form of a particular thing or individual when something or someone experiences improvement to superior versions of themselves that's what we call transformation. So you are growing from one version to a higher version of yourself. And that means that more potentials that are hidden inside of you are explored and made to manifest. And this kind of transformation can happen to a believer who engages the place or the lifestyle of prayer. Now there are two things I said from the first episode that I want to pick out before we get into this episode today. I won't take time to do a recap because I'm sure that um, if you look down the description box, you would see the link to the previous episodes. Or if you watch to the end of this video, you'll find it on your screen. So you can go back um, for your perusal and understand where we are coming from. But I said in the first episode that prayer changes you first two things that i'm picking out from the first episode the first change that occurs when an individual engages in prayer especially according to the dictates of scripture is a change that comes to his or her self the change begins from your inside out the second thing I said is that God wants to change you so you can change the world around you. That's why we pray. 
that God transforms us and then through us transforms the world around us. He, he causes a change around us by creating a change within us. And this happens in the place of prayer. We spoke about the heart stage of transformation by prayer. We talked about the mental stage, the energy stage. Now we want to talk about the physical stage. The physical stage. Because this change will happen in different segments of our lives. Now we are dealing with the physical stage, the bodily stage. So the change or the transformation that comes and affects your physical state through prayer is what we want to look at right now. That means a state where the natural laws that places restrictions on our bodies are suspended. There's such a thing as that. And it happens when we pray that natural laws are suspended laws upon which our bodies function and exist are suspended so that our bodies can enjoy or experience enhancement that comes by the energy that is supplied in the place of prayer remember when we were defining prayer we said prayer is a spiritual activity that is sponsored or carried on through a supply of spiritual energy so that being said let's get into the word of god look at a few scriptures and then we'll look at the things that happens when you experience physical transformation by prayer. First of all, let's look at Psalm 34 verse 5. Psalm 34 verses 5. You know, for this episode, I had to bring my old Bible. So I'm opening you. Hear the pages flipping again and again. Psalm 34 verses 5 it says they looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed now the verse before verse 5 and the verse after verse 5 which is verse 4 and 6 uh, speaks about the activity of prayer so when you read it in context you will know that he was still referring to the activity um, of prayer when it says that they look to him they look to him you know that when we pray, we behold the face of our Father. We behold the face of the Most High in prayer. There is an intimacy that occurs when we pray. We come face to face with God. And no man experiences that level of intimacy with God without experiencing change. There's no man. Every time we get closer to God, we have his, we experience change because we interact with his divine nature. Now, the Bible tells us in Psalms 91 verse 1 that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Of course, the secret place there speaks of the place of prayer. It speaks of moments of prayer, moments spent in the presence of God through prayer and fellowship. So when we get into the place of prayer, we become intimate with God. We behold His face. And in Psalm 34, where we read, it says, they looked to Him and their faces were radiant. They began to radiate with light. Why? Because the Bible says God is light. And in Him there is no variableness, neither any shadow of turning. So when we look to Him who is light in the place of prayer, we experience a change whereby we become reflectors and radiators of the same light, the same glory that exhumes from the Father. We begin to manifest it even in our physical state. He says they looked to him and their faces were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. That light speaks of hope. That when we get into the presence of God, we come out with a sense of hope. We come out with joy. The joy of the Lord becomes our strength because joy is obtainable in His presence. And we get to touch that joy. We get to touch His peace. 
we get to see the hope that lies ahead of us when we pray two more scriptures and then we go fully into the lesson second corinthians 3 verse 18 second corinthians 3 verse 18 it says, But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So you see, it's talking about beholding the face of the Lord again. Now, this is a figurative expression to mean intimacy in prayer, that we behold the face of the Lord. And the Bible says when we do that, we experience change, transformation from glory to glory. It means from one degree of radiance to another. It keeps getting higher as we keep beholding Him, as we keep coming into His presence, as we maintain that intimate lifestyle of prayer until we are changed into the same image, until we become manifestors of his glory last scripture will be romans chapter 8 verse 10 to 11 which speaks fundamentally about the impact of the life of god in a human body it says and if christ is in you the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of righteousness but if the spirit of him who raised jesus from the dead dwells in you he who raised christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you now if you read the king james translation in verse 11 where it says give life the king james says quickens so the word quickens means to give life when the spirit of god dwells in us and we begin to engage the activity of prayer which is the very interaction of our spirits with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that we experience a process of quickening. He begins to supply his very life, not just to our spirit, but even into our body. Now, the word quicken means to give life. It means to revitalize. It means to re-energize. It means to enhance. So, there is something happens literally to our body because it is being powered by the life that comes from the spirit a life whose laws are superior and bypasses the laws that govern our natural body so definitely there will be a change and that change is something that will literally manifest that we can see the spirit gives life to our bodies now jesus tapped into this this physical change that occurs in prayer jesus tapped into it in luke chapter 9 verse 28 to 29 when he ascended the mountain with his three disciples peter james and john the bible says while he prayed that his his appearance was altered and his face began to shine all of a sudden there seems to be an energy that powered the body of Jesus. It was as if Jesus was plugged on to unlimited energy to the point where he literally began to radiate it. This was not just natural beauty. This was glory by the Spirit that was being exhumed through the body of Jesus. That tells you that our bodies were created to give expression to the life of God that dwells in us. As a matter of fact, the entire material universe that we live in, we call the earth, was created by God to give expression or to manifest the realities that he has created of himself in the realm of the spirit. So that you begin to see the glory of God, the beauty of his life when it is hidden in mortal body, in mortal flesh. There are four things that happens, four experiences that we will um, that becomes part of us when we activate transformation by prayer. These four experiences are captured in our physical 
bodies. Now I want to say them to us before we bring this session to an end. First of all, bodily weakness is overcome. The first experience when transformation, physical transformation by prayer occurs is that bodily weakness is overcome. All of a sudden, you are strengthened. The Bible says in Ephesians 3 verse 16 that he will grant that we are strengthened with might by the Spirit in the inner man. Strength begins to come from within you into your body. Remember, I think in 2 Corinthians 4 16 says that though our outward man perishes, but the inward man is renewed. So strength begins to come that swallows up our weakness in the body. So all of a sudden, when you pray, you seem to be overcome by bodily weakness at the instance of your prayer. But as you continue and you tap into that glory, that change that occurs, you will see that literally strength begins to surge from the inside of you and instead of getting tired you want to keep praying and again and again in fact it gives you so much energy in fact that's the energy we use in preaching that's the energy we use in ministering so that your physical and current state of weariness is swallowed up by the supernatural strength that comes by the spirit of god from within you number two is that frequent afflictions and ailments are minimized or stop the physical transformation by prayer frequent afflictions and ailments falling sick again and again is totally minimized or stopped that means that you will live a healthy life when you engage the place of prayer often and this is something that i wish a lot of christians knew and even those who know it I wish they really believed it that good health can be tapped into by prayers you see because the more you pray the more your strength is renewed your physical strength is renewed because it's tapping in from the energy that is supplied by your spirit and because weakness and weariness is swallowed up there will be no need for your body to fall ill again all of a sudden your body is energized by the spirit to overcome um, the invasion of germs and other foreign bodies antibodies in your body system it is it is powerful because i mean the energy that does this is supernatural it overrides on natural laws so prayerful people real prayerful people that know this live and walk in divine health the Bible says in Romans 8, 11, where we read that if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us, he that raised Christ from the dead will quicken. He will give life. He will re-energize, enhance, revitalize. That's a health word. Revitalize our body. So you will no longer experience falling sick here and there. In fact, it can get to a point where it literally alters some natural defects in your bodies. And I've seen this by experience in my short time of you know being in ministry i've seen this i've seen this as miracles that god has worked in the lives of people i've seen it in my own life too that there is there is there is enhancement that comes to your health so you no longer fall ill you remember in james 5 13 the bible says is any of you afflicted let him pray so the cure for affliction is a consistent life of prayer number three is that our natural appearance of vigor is altered and enhanced the word altered means to change our natural appearance and vigor strength what we call energy is altered is changed and enhanced it becomes superior it becomes higher much more than we we have ever experienced before one man that experienced this was Moses. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 7, that when Moses died at 120 years, his eyes, his vision was not dim, and he had the strength of his youth. He was as strong as 40 when he was 120. 
So you see, it wasn't aging that killed Moses. As a matter of fact, it was God who asked him to go and die. The Bible says in Numbers 27, verse 12 and 13, God told him, go on so so mountain, and when you get there, see the promised land, and you'll be gathered to your people. That's just a polite way of the Bible saying, go there and die. So it wasn't aging that killed him. The Bible speaks of Enoch, Hebrews 11, verse 5, that he did not taste death, for God took him, but that he walked with God. Enoch had an intimate life of prayer with God. Most prayerful people we find in scripture, they had exceptional um, appearance and vigor in them, more than the average person. Time will fail me to talk about um, Simeon and Anna in scripture, the two people that bore witness to the birth of Jesus in Luke chapter 2. Simeon was already a very old man. And the Bible says God promised that he won't see that till he saw the Lord's Christ because he was interceding and praying for the coming of Jesus. Same thing with Anna, 84 years, but still going to the temple, fasting and praying and was able to prophesy and bear witness to the coming of Jesus. So when you pray more often, the physical transformation that will occur is that your natural appearance and vigor is enhanced, is changed for the better. And then finally, we become an extension of God's power. We become an extension of God's power. Your physical body, through touch, becomes a conductor of the very life and power of the Spirit of God that dwells inside of you. No, nobody can touch God physically. You can only touch God by faith. But when God harnesses his glory, his presence in a man. The physical body of that man becomes a conductor. It's just like electricity. You can't see it. But anything that is metal can conduct it from one place to the other. So our bodies can conduct the power, the glory, the life of God uh, to our world when we pray. It happened to Jesus. The Bible says his face began to shine and his, you know, his, 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 his raiment, everything, even his raiment, his clothes became white. His clothes caught up with the, the life, the power, the energy that was transfused and transmitted from within him. In 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7, the Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power will be of God and not of us. The treasure in earthen vessels so we can become conductors. And so people look at you and know that your life is but a display of something that is greater and supernatural. In 2 Corinthians 3 6, the Bible says that we are ministers he has made us ministers of the new covenant. I read it in one translation. It said dispensers. Dispensers. So you are a dispenser of the life of God, the power of God. When people touch you, when prayer has transformed you physically, a touch from you to someone becomes a contact point to experiencing the raw power of God. In Acts chapter 19, the Bible says God worked special miracles through Paul, through the hands of Paul, that handkerchiefs were taken from him. Not like he was selling handkerchiefs or distributing, no. Clothes that probably Paul was working, you know, he was a tent maker. So maybe after working and he, he, you know, he perspires, he, he takes a handkerchief, cleans the sweat and then drops it. And then someone who was sick makes contact with it and they were instantly healed. That the power that, that his clothes contacted from his body because his body had been altered by the power and the energy that comes from prayer was so intelligent that it could spot sickness, demons in the bodies of people and bring them deliverance and healing. What a powerful experience that is. When you become a literal career of the presence of God, when you become the very ark that hosts the glory of God. And that's what God wants us to be. That, that's his desire. He wants you to become 
a physical conductor, a radiator of his glory. God wants creation to touch him through you. He wants the earth to be filled with his glory through us that we will reveal and manifest his life and his power. And I believe that if you're watching, it is because this is your desire. And friend, if this is your desire, God wants to make it happen. All you need to do is give yourself to the place of prayer. Spend time with God. Become intimate like Paul was. Paul said, I speak with tongues more than you all. 1 Corinthians 14, 18. He said, I will pray with my spirit in verse 15 of 1 Corinthians 14. So you see, Paul engaged in prayer often and became intimate with God till his body was literally changed into become a conductor, becoming a conductor. Jesus, the Bible says in Luke chapter 6, verse 12, he prayed all night before God. And in verse 19 of that same chapter, the Bible says they sought to touch him because power, they could see power leaving him. And that power could heal the sick, it could cast out devils, it could work miracles, signs and wonders. When the Bible says that we are for signs and wonders, I believe this is what it meant. That your life becomes a conductor, a display of the power and the glory of God. I want to pray with you right now as we wrap up this episode. That Father, in the name of Jesus, to the one that is listening and watching right now, make them physical conductors, physical channels through which your life, your power, your glory, your presence, your beauty, your wisdom can be revealed change them till they change their world in the name of jesus christ may devils flee when they see you may people experience the fire of revival when they touch you may your presence bring life over death may you become a sign and a wonder in jesus mighty name amen and amen god bless you and i'll see you in the next episode Thank you.